The Principles of Economics by Carl Menger Chapter 6 Use Value and Exchange Value Section 3 Changes in the Economic Center of Gravity of the Value of Goods One of the most important tasks of economizing men is that of recognizing the economic value of goods, that is, of being clear at all times whether their use value or their exchange value is the economic value. The determination of which goods or what portions of them are to be retained and which it is on one's best economic interest to offer for sale depends on this knowledge. But judging this relationship correctly is one of the most difficult tasks of practical economy, not only because a survey of all available use and exchange opportunities is required, even in well-developed markets, but also, and above all, because the factors on which a correct solution of this problem must be based are subject to a multitude of changes. It is clear that anything that diminishes the use value of a thing to us may, other things being equal, cause the exchange value of the good to become the economic form of value, and that anything that increases the use value of a good to us can have the effect of pushing the significance of its exchange value into the background. An increase or decrease in the exchange value of a good will, in other things being equal, have the opposite effect. The chief causes of changes in the economic form of value are as follows. 1. Changes in the importance of the particular satisfaction that a good renders to the economizing individual who has it at his command if its use value to him is increased or decreased by the change. Thus, if a person loses his taste for tobacco or wine, the stock of tobacco or wine in his possession will take on a predominating exchange value for him. And men who have been hunting or sporting enthusiasts will sell their hunting utensils, hunting animals, etc., when their pastime have lost their previous importance to them. The diminution in the use value of these goods having caused their exchange value to come to the fore in importance. Transitions from one stage of life to another especially are characterized by changes of this kind. Satisfaction of the same want has a different meaning to an adolescent than that it has to a mature man, and a different meaning again to a mature man than it does to an old man. Even if no other factors existed, therefore, the natural course of human development would alone cause the use of value of goods to undergo significant changes. The simple toys of the child lose their use value to the adolescent. The study materials used by the adolescent lose their value to the mature man, and the instruments by which the mature man earns a living lose their use value to the old man. In each instance, the exchange value of the goods mentioned become predominant. Nothing is more common, therefore, than for the adolescent to sell the goods that had a predominating use value to him as a child. We see people entering maturity generally selling not only many of the means of enjoyment appropriate to the adolescents, but the study materials of their youth as well. Old men can be observed permitting not only many of the means of enjoyment of their prime that require strength and courage to use, but also the instruments they employed in earning a living, factories, business firms, etc., to pass into other hands. If the economic phenomena that would appear to be the natural consequence of these facts do not appear as distinctly on the surface as we might expect. The reason is to be found in the family life of men. For the passage of goods from the older members of a family into the possession of younger members takes place not as a result of monetary compensation, but as a result of affection. The family within its special economic relations is thus an essential factor in the stability of human economic relations. Increases in the use of value of a good to its possessor naturally have the opposite effect. The owner of a forest, for example, to whom the yearly cut of timber has only the exchange value, will probably immediately discontinue exchanging his timber for other goods if he constructs a blast furnace to melt iron and needs the full output of his timberland for its operation. An author who previously sold his work to publishers will not do so in the future if he found his own magazine and so on. 2. Mere changes in the properties of a good can shift the center of gravity of its economic importance if its use value to the possessor is altered by the change while its exchange value either remains unchanged or does not rise or fall to the same extent as its use value. 
Clothes, horses, dogs, coaches, and similar objects usually lose their use value to wealthy people almost entirely if they have an externally visible defect. Their exchange value, although also decreased, comes to the fore in importance since the loss in their use value is usually greater than these persons than the loss in their exchange value. On the other hand, goods become altered in many instances in such a way that their economic value which previously was the economic form of value to the economizing individuals possessing them, recedes as compared with their use value. Thus, innkeepers and grocers usually employ foods having some external defect for their own consumption, since the defect in these goods causes them to lose their exchange value almost completely, while their use value often remains the same, or is at any rate not diminished to the same extent as their exchange value. The same phenomenon can be observed in other trades. Shoemakers, especially in smaller villages, often wear badly fitting shoes. Tailors often wear imperfectly cut clothes, and hatters often wear hats in whose production some slight accident had occurred. 3. We come now to the third and most important cause of changes in the economic center of gravity of the value of goods. I refer to increase the quantities of goods at the disposal of economizing individuals. An increase in the quantity of a good a person has, almost always, other things remaining the same, causes the use value of each unit of the good to whom to diminish and its exchange value to become the more important. After the harvest, the exchange value of grain is almost without exception the economic form of value to farmers, and it remains so until as a result of successive sales of portions of the grain, its use value again becomes the more important. The grain that farmers still possess in summer generally have a predominating use value to them. At another place in this work, I have shown at what limit the importance of the exchange value of goods passes into the background as compared with their use value. To an heir who is already equipped with sufficient furniture before succession, and who finds still another large set of furniture in the legacy of his testator, many pieces of the furniture will have a very low use value, and some perhaps no value at all, and will therefore acquire a predominating exchange value. The heir will continue to sell pieces of furniture until the pieces remaining in his possession again have a predominating use value. A decrease in the quantity of a good available to an economizing individual will, on the other hand, generally cause its use value to him to increase, and thus cause the quantities of the good previously destined for exchange now to acquire predominating use value. Of special importance in this connection is the effect of changes in total wealth. When commercial relations are well developed, an increase or decrease in wealth is equivalent to the economizing individual experiencing the change to an increase or decrease of almost every particular kind of economic good. A man who becomes poor is forced to retrench in the satisfaction of almost all his needs. He will satisfy some needs less completely, quantitatively or qualitatively. Other needs he will perhaps not satisfy at all. If, after his impoverishment, there are any of the choicer consumption goods or articles of luxury in his possession, which previously contributed to the harmonic satisfaction of his needs, but which do not correspond to his changed circumstances, he will, if he is an economizing individual, sell them in order to use the proceeds to satisfy more important needs of himself and his family that would otherwise remain unsatisfied. People who have lost a large part of their wealth by unlucky speculations or as a result of other misfortunes actually sell their jewelry, works of art, and other objects of luxury in order to provide themselves with the necessities of life. Increase in wealth has a similar but opposite effect since many goods that previously had a predominating use value to their owners lose this use value, and the economic importance of their exchange value is pushed to the fore. Thus people who have suddenly become rich usually sell their simple furniture, their shabby trinkets, their inadequate houses, and many other goods that had previously had a predominating use value to them.